Hello and welcome to the sequence of videos on hypothesis testing. In this video, we're going to talk about the paired t-test, or you can say it two sample t-test with paired observations or dependent samples. When do we perform a paired t-test? A paired t-test would typically be performed when the two sets of measurements or observations that are paired or related in some way. This is very important. So it's more like a before and after treatment. So let's say we have an athlete who is given certain amount of coaching and guidance, and after which we look at the performance before the treatment and after the treatment. So in any case, we are, when we are comparing the observations in a before and after way, or observations related to the same object at two different time points, it is going to be a pair t-test. What are the major assumptions in case of a pair t-test? Independence of observations. Please keep this in mind. We are talking about the independence of observations. So within a sample, if you have, let's say, 20 athletes, each athlete is independent. But when we compare it, when we get the sample two, we will have a paired observation for each athlete. Normality of paired differences. So here, analysis is done for the paired differences, the value of the before and after difference. We assume normality in case of paired differences. And the last piece is, because the data is paired, Everything is paired. You can't have an after value without a before value and the other way. So it naturally tends to imply that we'll have equal sample sizes. Let's look at the test statistic. It's pretty straightforward. What is this D bar representing? This is the mean of the paired differences. So once you obtain a sequence of differences, you can take an average of that. What is this SD representing? This is the standard deviation of the paired differences. And the square root of n, as it generally implies, it is the sample size. In this case, the degrees of freedom would be n minus 1, where n is the sample size. Let's move on to solving a problem. In the rapidly evolving digital landscape, OTT apps have become increasingly popular for entertainment consumption. To ensure user satisfaction and engagement, app developers frequently roll out feature updates. In this study, we investigate the impact of a recent feature update on the average time spent by users on an OTT app. Samples have been provided in the file called App Usage. Conduct a test at 5% level of significance to check if there is a significant difference in the average usage time after the feature update. So once again, let's understand what all information has been provided. First is, of course, we know the test is to be conducted at 5% level of significance, or the alpha value is 0.05. So what is the hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that mean usage before the feature update is the same as the mean usage after the feature update. We'll assume everything remained the same. However, the OTT platform would definitely want to claim that the usage after is greater than the usage before. It has brought about an improvement in the engagement. Let's quickly jump onto the data and see how does it look like. All right, here we go. So we have 20 observations and each observation is paired, right? So these would have been, you can imagine these are 20 different users. So we can say for user one, the consumption before the feature update was 10 minutes, but after the update, it's 15 minutes. Similarly, we have these paired observations. So you can think of each paired observation as an observation coming from a particular user. Now we'll visualize this, how these two samples are. You can see this is sample one or the distribution of before, and this is sample two or the distribution of after. If you look at the descriptive statistics, which can be easily computed, in some problems, they provide us the descriptive statistics to begin with, as we can always calculate it with the help of raw data. So you can see the mean of the before was 10.25 minutes, which became 15.15 minutes. The variance was 5.98 or close to six, which has become 9.6. And the sample sizes, of course, are supposed to be equal. So this is about the descriptive statistics. Let's quickly perform this test in Excel. So as shown in the last video, we can go to the data tab, and depending on the version of Excel that you're using, it might vary a little bit in appearance, but more or less, this is an important utility. It'll always be there. So I've gone to data analysis tab, and we have an option here which says t-test paired two samples for means. This is a test for means, and we are comparing paired two samples. Let's hit OK. It is asking us to select the first sample. So the first sample is this. Just selected that. Then it's asking to select the second sample. We can select that. What is the hypothesized mean difference? So we can put this as zero right now because we don't have a specific number that we are claiming as a difference. All the OTT is claiming is that 
the usage after is greater than the usage before. Right now, we don't have a number to quote. We'll put it as zero. And do we have labels? Labels mean headers here. Of course, we do have, and it'll give us the output in a new sheet. Let me just hit OK. You can see an output has come, and let's just zoom in a little bit. I can expand it, and we'll try to read this. So here are the descriptive stats observations that we saw earlier. How many degrees of freedom? We had 20 observations. So degrees of freedom would be n minus 1, which is 19. Test statistic, as it has computed, is negative 21.46. And it's giving us separate probabilities for one tail and two tail tests. Now, my question is, is this a two tail test or a one tail test? I believe you guessed it right. This is a one tail test because we are checking for a greater than scenario here. We are not checking for inequality. So it's a right tail test in particular. And we can see a p-value, which is pretty small. It is 4.38 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 15. This is to be read as 10 to the power minus 15. And also we have a critical value, which is 1.72. Now for more clarity, let's try to visualize this. So here's the scenario. We are talking about a critical value of 1.73. And you might have noticed in Excel, it was saying the test statistic is negative 21.46. Well, it was probably doing it for the left tail because we couldn't mention a specific choice of tail and it was by default giving it for the left tail. But as you know, these distributions are symmetric, so we can translate it into an equivalent value on the right. Of course, as you can see, this is the alpha region or the 5% region, and this is the critical value. And you can see the test statistic falls very much under the alpha region. Area to the right of it is not even clearly visible because this is a very, very small area. But this is a distribution with a 19 degrees of freedom, and we can see the position of test statistic compared to the critical value or the p-value, which is the area to the right of this line compared to this area to the right of this critical value, both would suggest a rejection of null hypothesis, which means actually there is a difference. The app usage has gone up. At what level of confidence can we say that? We took the level of significance as 5%, so we can say this with 95% confidence, or 1 minus alpha. Now let's quickly solve this problem in Python. All right, so we are here. In order to read the file, we'll have to call the library called pandas, and we would need this function to be able to perform a t-test in a paired way. And in sci-fi library, it is known as t-test rel, which is nothing but a relative sample. We are reading the Excel file, which is called app usage, and just did a quick describe on the data frame. We get the same descriptive statistic. For serial number, we don't have to interpret this because this is just a counter. But for the observations, we have equal number of observations, the sample means and the sample standard deviations are also stated. Now there is an important point. In order to perform this test, we have to give the input in the right order. So what are we stating? If we are stating that after is greater than before, then that's how we should write it as well. So what I mean to say is that it will be read from left to right. So if you write after first and then before, it simply means what you're going to write here as the alternative hypothesis will be read in the same fashion after is greater than before. If you do that, you get the same identical p-value that you were getting in Excel and the test statistic. And remember I said Excel was providing us this value with a negative sign. So what Excel was doing under the hood is this. It was writing before first and after afterwards and then was using a less than kind of a hypothesis. So before is less than after is same as after is greater than before. It depends on how you state it. If you use a less kind of an option, the test statistic might come with the opposite sign. But there's nothing wrong because the curve is symmetric. As far as the p-value is concerned, there is no difference. As far as the test statistic is concerned, there could be a negative sign. This much we should know about the t-test, and then we are good to go. In this case, after performing the test, we conclude the usage after the feature update has gone up. That's all in this video. Thank you.